All right, what's going on everyone? I've wanted to do this video for a very long time, but I really wanted to get some seat time in on my Nitro Z21 XL. So in this video, I wanna do kind of a review. This isn't a show off what I have kind of video. It's more of a review of the exact vessel I've run for the past year. Again, I wanted to do this video last year, but I just didn't have the seat time. So with all of 2023 going into 2024, let's check out the Nitro Z21 XL. And it's important to say that I have ran five different boat companies throughout my career. And I honestly can say that this is the best vessel for tournament bass fishing that I have absolutely ever ran. Uh, just off the top of my head, it's a lot bigger and wider than anything I've ever ran. And especially under a full tournament load, this thing just rocks. It eats up waves. Fishability, you could fish three, four people at times in the summertime, two different dogs running wild on this boat. It fishes really, really big. But let's go start in the back here. Mercury Pro XS 250, they've been building four strokes for a very, very long time. I have not had a single issue with this motor. All of last year, I ran it hard. I put 290 hours on that engine, zero issues whatsoever. The big thing there is just keeping up with your maintenance. And Mercury does a good job at giving you access from the very top cowling there to change your oil. So just like the Toyota Tundra you run, just like your truck, just like your daily driver car, um, it is imperative that you keep that oil nice and clean and they made it possible um, just by flipping up this cap up top here. Don't even have to remove the cowling. So they made it super, super simple. Awesome motor. Bob's hydraulic jack plate. That whole thing right there um, is really cool in conjunction with the Z-Touch system that is in this boat. Um, it even has a little remote, but there's like this little shallow water feature to it, as well as a hole shot feature. By just a press of a button, either on the Z-Touch panel or on a remote, the jack plate digs all the way down. It trims all the way down for you. And when you're in shallow water, you just hit one button and the jack plate goes all the way up and it trims all the way up just like that. So that's a huge feature that I use a lot, whether I'm down there in Florida in that real shallow water or up north in that real deep water, I'm constantly digging and raising that engine with that Bob's hydraulic jack plate. So really cool feature there. Of course, in the summertime, sometimes we go swimming and this ladder is really nice to have. It's just kind of spring loaded up here. Excellent if you ever had an emergency, if you're out in the cold or whatever, really simple way to get up inside the boat. Very cool feature there. Pretty standard on most bass boats these days, but this one is nice because it stays out of the way. Nice and spring loaded, uh, really cool there. Uh, power poles, you know, without getting into like all the bells and whistles, and by the way, we did a little series with uh, Bass Pro called Tech on Deck, where we go in depth, in detail, all the little bells and whistles, the, the, you know, from the trolling motor to the poles to you know, brakes and all the electronics. I don't wanna get into all the electronics on this boat here today, but I do wanna show you just the basic features of all this stuff here. So going down here, this is an absolute lifesaver right here. Um, Bass Pro sent this to me. This is an actual motor toter. It's an actual transom saver. And you know, it's a real kind of uh, popular thing nowadays just to use a regular block in the engine here. And they call that a transom saver, but really all your weight is still on the transom. So really the only way to take the weight off of the transom itself is by using these old school transom savers. But this one's beefed up. This one's got a little shock absorber on it. And the little V right here, it's a little ABS plastic V that cushions that lower unit really, really nicely. So if you travel a lot of miles like me, I highly suggest an old school motor toter like this and get the beefed up version because it really does save your transom. All right, coming around here, um, you know, these things really grab your eye, right? These are sea light brakes. Uh, new for me this year, I've got a couple of trips out um, with these things. You know, the whole forward facing sonar game has absolutely changed. Whenever you see a fish out there 100 feet and you're doing three and a half, four miles per hour, you could deploy these, hit a switch, and they actually reverse the boat or stop you in your tracks. You're able to keep that forward facing sonar beam on that fish and make repetitive casts. So although I've only have a couple weeks on these, uh, on these sea light brakes, 
I absolutely love these things. Really, really nice feature. The crappie guys have been uh, using these for a very long time. You're gonna see a lot more bass boats moving forward with the sea light brakes. Okay, before hopping in the boat, I wanna show you the trailer real quick. They use LED lights all throughout the trailer here. So none of these old school halogen light bulbs where you have to kind of swap them out throughout the year. These LEDs last for years and years and years, and that is huge. Not to mention, all along the fenders and through the front here, they have nice steps to get into the boat. That's a really nice feature all through here. Each fender's got three different steps. Plus there, is there are two steps at the bow of the, of the boat there. Really, really nice tandem axle trailer with tandem brakes. That's huge. I tow with a half ton truck. And you know, when I got to stop at a red light quickly, those brakes help uh, slow down the whole, the whole rig just like that. So having tandem brakes is absolutely clutch when you're towing in and out of traffic, especially. This is a really cool place to have a spare tire. Excellent spot here. You know, some you know, some boat manufacturers have the spare tires outside here, but this is nice and recessed underneath the whole vessel itself. It helps keep that overall trailer package size down. So really cool spare tire there, and that is a full-size tire, and that's one of the premium wheels that, uh, that I ordered with this package. Really, really nice. Here's a cool little compartment right here. This is an excellent compartment for any tools or spare hitches, um, you, know, uh, you know, trailer tire replacing tools, jacks, things like that. Excellent little spot right there. Um, and then, you know, they use all Fulton F2 winches uh, and jacks. Um, so really, really cool trailer. Um, and of course, you know, you got the, the RV round plug that's pretty standard and most modern vehicles accept that plug right there. This is my favorite feature of the trailer, absolutely. Um, you know, whenever I wanna hop in my boat first thing in the morning, um, you know, I just hop right on the trailer here and this kind of helps you get in the boat right here. So this handle, I mean, it doesn't look like much, but that is huge when you're, when, you know, it's icy out, it's rainy out, whatever it is, having this nice grippy handle to hop in the boat is absolutely clutch. Let's go ahead and hop in here. Let me show you my tournament load and a couple different features that I really like about this boat. All right, starting out back here on the rear deck here. Um, just the space. I mean, look at the space in this bilge area here. This year, I'm fortunate enough to, you know, have all these electronics. I mean, I've got five different graphs, all these pumps. I've got the audio system. That all requires power. So I am running exactly, how many? I gotta count, one, two, three, four, five, six batteries. I'm running six batteries, six Battleborn 100 amp batteries, um, you know, from cranking to electronics to trolling, all of my battery power is back here. I specialty mounted another battery here. So just a huge, huge working space. What's really nice about this boat here is you have access to all your pumps right there. Just one little flip up right there. If you happen to have a live well go out, matter of fact, I've got one on right now. I can hear it right now. <laughs> Okay, there we go. All right, I have my live well pump on there. So like, I'm, like I said, if you happen to have a live well pump go out, you can easily swap it out just by flipping up that lid there. So extended space in the bilge area. And in this day and age where power is everything, you need to load this thing up with batteries. So really, really cool. Another really cool feature about this boat here, not a lot of bass boats do it, are these modular uh, trays here. So you could actually order more of these. That way, if you're going to up north or whatever, you load up all your smallmouth stuff, you could just kind of swap them out as you go. But here I keep all my safety equipment, ropes and life jackets and throw cushions, things like that in the back here. Over here on this side, equally as large, equally as modular as that other side there. I like to keep all my heavy stuff in the rear here. Um, that just helps with planing. Um, so all of my tungsten, all my lead, all my swim jigs, jigs, uh, lead, soft plastics, all that stuff's real heavy with the salt. So I like to keep all that heavy stuff back here. Again, a full tournament load is in this boat right now. So we get to go through it all. Live wells, pretty, Pretty huge live wells. They've got like this anti-slosh, anti-splash system here. 
It's really cool. They've got these wings that stick out. So once the fish actually go inside the live well, they're in this huge, deep, recessed space here. And it just keeps them from bumping up top, like on the surface. And there's a nice little drain plug up here on the top. If anything happens to get um, lodged in there, you could easily dislodge it because, hey, look, it's facing you. And that's basically your drain hole there. Oxygenator, you gotta have that in the summertime. All controlled with that Z-Touch system, pretty cool. The last thing you want, you know, when you're fishing a tournament, you know, when it's a slot limit or it's a 12 inch limit, 15 inch limit or whatever, your measuring stick, the last thing you want is this thing flopping around, making all kinds of noise, banging around. There's a nice little holster for it right there. You never lose it. It's always there for you when you're working around the live wells. And then coming over to this, this is really cool here. This I've never had on any other boat. Um, this right here is my push pull holder. And it also doubles as, a uh, net holder. So there's a little recession back here where the, the beef of the net gets to, you know, just kind of lie right there. And these nice Velcro, st Velcro straps hold either your net or your push poles in place. So that's a really, really nice feature. And then moving towards the center here, this is awesome, right? Okay, normally when I'm fishing a tournament, you know, this is me right here, there's my marshal. Every now and then we'll have a tournament where we have a marshal and a camera guy, or two camera guys, or in the summertime, I got Trait, my wife out, I got dogs everywhere. What's really nice about this center console system, not only can you lift this up and store a bunch of stuff in here, but you could also use the modular seat system or the third person system. The seat cushion actually buttons into place right here and it even has a back on it. So that's one thing that my previous boats didn't have. It's an actual backrest for the third person seat. So really, really thoughtful there. I mean, I'm a short dude, I'm five foot seven on a good day. And it's really nice to have a sliding cockpit seat here, not only for the driver, but also for the passenger. You could have a nice little comfortable backrest there. You could also pump this up as well to where, you know, when you're running on St. Clair or up there on Lake Ontario, just bump it up and you're riding on air, man. It's, it's really, really nice. All right, and speaking of the ride, the biggest thing that I learned as soon as I st stepped right into this boat uh, early last year is how high everything sits. Again, I'm 5'7", but I've had six foot two partners, six foot four partners in here, and they say, wow, this thing sits really high. It doesn't feel like you're sitting down in a low rider, you know? It's a really nice stance for me here. I myself, I could see over the graphs clearly. Um, it's just a nice ride height. And you know, the gunnels here, the gunnels are just a medium, uh, medium height here. And everything just feels so nice and open and very, very spacious. All right, moving over here, um, the passenger side, cup holders, all that stuff's pretty standard. If you were to order a second console, you know, a lot of times I sell my boat at the end of the year and a lot of, you know, retired gentlemen love um, to take their wives, girlfriends, uh, friends out. And you know, those, those really cold, rainy or snowy days, a lot of times your passenger will appreciate a console. So, um, you know, in this boat, they made it really easy to add a console. All you gotta do is take this panel off right here and the console screws right into this flat space right under the glove box here. And in this case, I just keep, you know, just glove box type things and your super glue, registration, gloves, things like that. But that's a really nice little feature there that not, not a lot of bass boats have. It's just a really nice, comfortable ride for your co-angler with access to a glove box and a second console if you wanted it. Okay, before I come up to the front of the boat here, I wanted to sit back down on the console here and show you the Z-Touch system. Uh, really, really cool. It's a, it's a touch pad system where you control all your live wells, all your lights, your trim, uh, your dimmer, your light, uh, you know, your interior lighting. This is really cool here. I love this right here. This is so awesome. I mean, look at the LED lighting here that comes with this Nitro Z21. I mean, if you're in the mood for yellow, you could go to yellow, you could go to red, you could go to pink if you're feeling that way. Um, I kind of like a nice little greenish yellow here for the most part. So we'll go ahead and just leave it on that right there tone it down just a hair. But this Z-Touch system, everything you need to control the boat um, is right here at your fingertips. Just nice and simple, nice and concise. Everything's right here. I've got an audio system. 
I gotta tell you, if you do ever order a boat, make sure you order the audio system. It hooks up right to your phone, right to Bluetooth. For all your tournament guys, if you're out there idling, you know, looking for offshore structure, it's really nice to break up the monotony with a nice little Metallica or a whatever, you know, add your favorite artists, right? You know, go out there and, and listen to music. It, it helps you find fish, it really does. So that's the audio system, other controls like the power pole controls right there. I also have another switch back here. But the biggest thing, again, with this console is just how spacious it is. And you know, it's dealer's choice on how much room you wanna give yourself. And of course the hot foot is also adjustable. So if you have your seat all the way forward, you could bring the hot foot back. And likewise here, if you bring your seat all the way back, you could also bring the hot foot back as well. So Lowrance HDS 12 on the left, Humminbird Solix 12 on the right, without getting in too much detail, side imaging, uh, uh, you know, down imaging, 2D sonar on the right and on the left, purely mapping in 2D. And that gets me by with what I need to do when I'm on tour. So again, this is just kind of the fast paced breakdown of the lake, but all my work is done at the nose of the boat here. So as we kind of cruise up here, look at, I got some of my forward facing sonar baits we've been working on, huge, huge cooler. So if you want to take, you know, your boys and have a good time on the lake safely, you could fill that thing up with as many cold sodas as you want. I mean, I literally fill that thing up in the summertime with like five bags of ice and it holds it perfectly. Those summertime smallmouth tournaments, I'll take bags of ice, ice my fish, no problem. I mean, look how, look, look, look how big that ice chest is. I mean, that thing is huge. That's probably one of my favorite features of this boat right there is just the spa overall space, but especially, the cooler, man, you gotta have a huge cooler. Most of my tackle, you know, when I'm doing tackle pre-tournament or during the tournament, I'll sit right here, do all my tackle. So these nice little tool holsters are really, really nice. Got pliers, uh, you know, got scissors, pliers and scissors, backups, right? Because your co-anglers always walk off with them. And we love our co-anglers. Um, just really nice holsters here. Everything is done right here when I'm rigging up. What's really nice is this deck system here. I'm not a big fan of the single lid flip up because where do you sit? So when you're trying to do tackle and you go to grab a crankbait or a jig or something like that, where do you sit? You have to move all the way over here to lift up the single lid. I really like this split lid design here on this boat itself because I could just sit right here as I'm doing tackle. If I need something on this side, boom. All my stuff is right here, nicely laid out. All my hard baits over here. Got some odds and ends, plastic worms, things like that. Uh, really cool system here. You know, some of these, I should probably put some of these forward facing minnows right here in this little magnetic uh, lure holder system. That's really nice to have. It keeps them out of the elements. It keeps them from rusting and things like that. So I will end up moving those next week when I'm on the water. Same thing over here, just huge, huge, huge storage. So with all this space, they really utilized um, and thought about, you know, how are we gonna lay out this tackle storage system? And again, this is really, really deep where you could fit, you know, all the Bass Mafia boxes in here, your 3,700 size boxes, the double wide boxes, they fit in here all nice. And I'm, I just got, you know, I got, I got rolls of line, I got all kinds of things right here. And not to mention too, like this storage is really cool because you could actually fit extra rods in here. Really, really nice storage. And speaking of rods, I spent all day before this video rigging up 23 different rod and reel combos. Spooled them up with fresh line, put lures on them. 23 rods and reels fit in that port side rod locker. I mean, look at that. I mean, that is absolutely amazing little kind of customization tip that I like to do with my boats, whether, you know, it was five years ago, 10 years ago, I like to take the rod organizing tubes out of the boat. I simply utilize rod sleeves on all my rods. And this just allows me to fit 23 of them in there. With the rod tubes, you could fit anywhere from 15 to 18 or so. But when I'm under stress and I'm just, you know, doing my thing, tournament fishing, I just put the rod sleeve on, on, throw it in there and call it good. 23 rods and I could absolutely fit a few more in here. Lots and lots of storage yet again. A lot of spare rods. I think I've got 16 to 18 spare rods laid in on the starboard rod compartment side. This is where I store all of my rain gear, uh, you know, graph covers, 
things like that, some other safety items. I've got the Active Target box and LVS 34 mounted in here, and I still have plenty of space left. This is really cool too, what they did here. Not only do you have your fire extinguisher and a nice little holster here with easy access, but this light pole here. I mean, everyone's, you know, uh, thinking about safety out there, right? Whether it's foggy, low light, having a light pole, you gotta have it. You know, by law, you gotta have it. So having a nice little holster area for your light when you're done using it, the sun comes up, you're at safe light. This thing stows right here perfectly. That way it's not in the bottom of the rod compartment banging around and jacking up that LED bulb there. And the same goes for the pedestal seats too. Nice little holster area for those. Keep those out of the way and keep those from bouncing around in those waves. These two compartments right here, um, you know, everyone wants to know what those are all about. These are really nice shallow compartments that are awesome for rags, awesome for screen cleaner. They're excellent for that, that, that typical day box. Whether you're throwing a pack of bandito bugs or zoom worms, whatever your favorite lures are and you're up here, you're working. All right, I got to re-rig. These are really nice to just have all your worms and things like that here. I use them again for screen cleaner and stuff like that, but really nice shallow uh, compartments here. Just something really nice that they added to this boat. You know, it's just a, it's just a plus to have I mean, you would much rather have storage space than just blank space there. And it's out of the way of your rod tubes. It's out of the way of your rod tips. Just a very cool way of storing those things you might use that day. All right, coming up to the business end of the boat here. Uh, you know, I'm going to spend, if I've put 290 hours on my, my Mercury in the back here, I'm going to spend eight, nine, ten times as much time on the trolling motor here using Active Target, using Live Scope. Again, I don't want to get too into detail of all the bells and whistles, all the little things that I use electronically. Go to that the Bass Pro YouTube page where we did the Tech on Deck series where we get really in depth of all this stuff. But essentially what I have is a 12 inch Garmin up top, 12 inch Lowrance to the left, 12 inch Humminbird to the right. Mapping 2D uh, scout mode for those, for those grassy areas and then regular live scope vertical beam picking off those fish that are suspended out there. So this is just an awesome setup. I have it on a Geiger Tech mount. That thing is rock solid. It is not going anywhere. Really cool feature about this boat right here is access to all your wiring. Let's say something goes down. I mean, we treat these boats hard all throughout the year. You know, I gotta be back at three o'clock and I'm 45 miles up the river. Oh man, the wind's popping up. It's 20 mile an hour winds. I gotta go, I gotta go now. So we really beat these things up. And you know, if you ever have an issue with wiring or power, um, all you have to do is remove 10 screws and there you go. Your whole plate comes off and you can work on what you need to work on that afternoon. So if you go to order a, a Nitro Z21, more than likely it'll come with a Minn Kota trolling motor. I happen to swap mine out for a PowerPole Move trolling motor. Uh, this thing takes off 50 pounds of weight um you know compared to your traditional trolling motor so i you know with all these different graphs and electronics up here having a negative 50 pound trolling motor is absolutely huge it helps when you're you know traversing those heavy waves you're not nosing down all the time and by the way this boat is really really dry i mean an absolutely dry boat there's some other high performance bass boats out there that claim you know we got the best ride and this and that yeah but you, you get wet when you're you know when you're hitting the waves this thing stays super dry it's wide and it sprays those waves outwards to where you're not getting wet so awesome awesome vessel um, but back to the trolling motor here power pull move awesome it's super light made out of titanium there's no giant cord right here that's a really nice thing the only cord is this little coil cord right here so when i deploy the trolling motor there's nothing in the way. There's nothing hitting my graph. I don't have to mess with it. I don't have to step on this trolling motor as I deploy it. And this is all wireless pedaling right here. So as soon as I fire up the trolling motor, it's all wireless. And I gotta say, I've only had this trolling motor for about four, about three months now. And I gotta say, this is the smoothest trolling motor I've ever had. It's fast, it's quiet, it's, it doesn't clunk around. Um, but more importantly, with the forward-facing sonar stuff, if you just move your heel or your toe just a little bit, it moves, which is really nice because 
with forward facing sonar, it's all about being precise, precision, precision casting. You gotta have the fish, you gotta have the bait in line uh, or else you're not gonna catch anything. So having a very nice crisp trolling motor, the slightest movement just kinda, it, it takes that pinging angle, it takes that pinging beam to the left and to the right nice and smoothly, keeping you on target if that makes sense. So it is very imperative to have a smooth operating trolling motor when you're talking about forward facing sonar. And that's where we're at as a sport right now. So having that is money up here. You know, I've got my, um, I've got my power pole switches here, power pole eight foot blades, awesome, awesome anchors. Um, absolutely legit. Um, nice little cup holder up here, tool holder, uh, anchor button. Uh, these are my sea light brakes. Um, you know, I just have them in reverse. I never use them in forward. Uh, really nice there. Power pole readout. Pretty standard up here, but um, you know, this can't be a actual boat review without saying something negative. Like that guy in the negative, you know, in the comments saying something negative. Oh, but this, but that. The only negative thing I have to say about the Nitro Z21 XL is the fact that they don't have a Nitro Z22 XL because I've been running 20 foot boats my whole career for 13 years and I stepped up to a 21 foot boat last year and I will never ever ever go back and I'm a little dude and I don't carry that much tackle but when you have that co-angler when you have that camera guy when you have two dogs in the boat man the difference between a 21 foot boat and a 20 foot boat feels like 20 miles and the fact that they don't have a Z22 XL, that's the only negative I have to say about this whole boat. So there you have it. That's just a quick rundown, a quick review. And this is a video I wanted to do last year, but again, I do have the seat time now. This is absolutely the best fishing tournament boat I've ever been in and competed in. And there's no looking back. I mean, the Z21 is absolutely, a top-notch boat and it's not a big box boat right you think of uh you know boats that are made uh for big box stores you know it's not that kind of it's not that kind of boat this is a custom boat matter of fact i had it rigged last year uh from one of the riggers around here in dfw and he said dude do they build this thing for you uh like custom because all the screws lined up perfectly they use nuts they don't use self-tapping screws like some um, um boat manufacturers do it's just a really, really nice boat all the way around. And, you know, I, I mentioned a couple of really nice features of this boat, um, you know, the space being one, the cooler being the other, but let me end this video by showing you the coolest thing about this boat, because I'm a rigger. I like to, to tweak on things. I like to rig my own electronics. Come check this out. If I ever have an issue on the water and I'm competing with any of my graphs, any of my electronics on the dash, I can simply remove this windscreen here. I can simply remove the windscreen right there just like that and it gives me access to the console here. So whether I have to diagnose a problem, um, you know, whether I have to swap out some wiring for my electronics, my GPS, sonar, whatever it is, all, you know, or steering, all my cabling and things are right there. I don't have to get under my console. I don't have to undo screws. These are just nice. These are just nice. These are just nice thumb screws where you just unhook them and you have full access to, you know, your motor brain. Uh, your steering, all your electronics, things like that. So, you know, when we compete eight, nine months out of the year, things happen, things go wrong. We treat these things um, like they're a tool and having access, you know, not only at the bilge area, uh, not only inside the rod lockers, at the front plate there, but having access to the console here keeps me competitive while I'm on tour out there. So that's it, man, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a quick rundown head to toe of my boat here. Again, 2024 Nitro Z21 XL. You know, if you're interested in buying one or ordering one, I highly suggest you do it because the best thing amongst all of these features is the fact that they are absolutely affordable. Some of these bass boats nowadays are going for over $100,000. Not this Nitro Z21 XL. You get the best bang for your buck, hands down, 
and this thing is an absolute battleship. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys out on the water. I leave for Toledo Bend tomorrow morning, so I'm gonna finish packing up here, loading up my truck, and I'm out of here. <laughs>